A few people have asked me to comment on an effort to verify the correctness of the Rust standard library. So let's do that <laughs> and start with the comment that it could be utterly huge for the Rust community and everybody who uses the language. In fact, it's actually a very significant announcement for formal verification and static analysis more broadly because it can be a potentially a demonstration that static analysis tools can have a very good impact and for a very concrete, practical uh, application of those tools. However, I think that there are some ethical concerns about the way that the initiative has been structured. Uh, my impression, and I must stress that this is my impression because I've only read the media releases from AWS, the sponsor, and the Rust Foundation, which is essentially co-hosting the, the exercise, is that this initiative is structured as, an, as sort of an award scheme which pushes a lot of risk to the researchers. And that for me means that you have potentially very low paid academics or postdoc researchers essentially being used as cheap labor for, let's say, a trillion dollar company. Now, it's completely opt in. <laughs> so it's not as though uh, people are being manipulated. And some people actually really like doing analysis on these computer science challenges and would be doing the work anyway. So maybe it, those ethical concerns aren't uh, particularly, uh, or at least aren't as strong as uh, what I might have emphasized right off. The alternative would be maybe create a funding pool with fellowships and have, let's say, 20 or 30 people around the world working on formal verification. Instead, what they're doing is essentially crowdsourcing the effort. They've broken up the uh, overall objective of verifying 7,500 uses of the unsafe keyword in the standard library, including some very important pieces like the fundamental string type uh, into 13 smaller challenges, and each one is relatively tractable. The idea is that you can work on whichever strategy that you think will be able to solve one of these challenges and then they'll reward, reward you with, um, uh, I hope, prize money. <laughs> I'm actually not sure what the prizes are, but probably there will be uh, some sort of uh, congratulations and uh, presumably there will be some money attached. Despite the skepticism of essentially the freeloading concerns, there are two responses that I think are important to, to, to balance that out. One, this is a genuine effort by AWS to provide static analysis tools for the entire community. There are not many models that a corporate entity can follow to give money externally. Maybe the ch set of challenges or kind of some sort of award scheme is sort of the best that they could do. Things like contracting out expertise or even hiring people and sort of research fellows means that the intellectual property is probably going to essentially get swallowed into Amazon. And maybe that's a concern that they really want this to be out and external and for public consumption. The other part of this is that the group that is sponsoring the this crowdsourcing effort is actually also involved in other very significant projects like the Kani model checker is the most obvious one. And also efforts to streamline the Rust language as support for things like contracts and preconditions, which are very useful for analysis tools more, more broadly. So seen in the context of lots of other very positive efforts, I have a high degree of certainty that there's some genuine goodwill here. And the other point to make is that, uh, or at least re-stress, is that this could be a very exciting development for static analysis more broadly. Imagine not just having a compiler verified, but which is uh, what uh, Ferrisene from Ferris Systems is, uh, is doing, but also having a, uh, a standard library verified as well. That could be a hugely impactful example of positive progress by the static analysis and formal verification community. These advanced tools have struggled with adoption probably because they seem arcane or academic or too, too mathematical or too difficult. Even the term formal methods is indicative of the fact that this does not seem accessible.
And so my hope is that this will be a very positive project for many people. And I hope also that future iterations of programs like this will at least be intentional or mindful about ethical concerns between the sponsors and the participants.